Okay, now I'd like to call this meeting of the Planning Board to order. And if we could read the preliminaries. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, GL Chapter 30A, Subsection 18, and the Governor's March 15 and July 2, 2020 orders imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Town of Adams Planning Board is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort has been made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. We have posted today's agenda in accordance with open meeting law, which included the call and information for the meeting. Despite our best efforts, if we are not able to provide for real-time access for the public to participate in today's meeting, a recording of this meeting can be made available by request as this meeting is being recorded using the Zoom platform. Introduction. In conformance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 48, Section 5, the Adams Planning Board will hold a public hearing conducted via Zoom on May 17, 2021 at 7 p.m. at Town Hall 8 Park Street, Adams, Mass. The purpose of the public hearing is to provide interested park persons or parties with the opportunity to comment on proposed amendments to the Adams Zoning Bylaws, Article 6, Section 125-35, Licensed Marijuana Establishments, to expand the location for certain licensed marijuana establishments within the Industrial Park IP Zoning District in Adams, while minimizing potential adverse impacts of marijuana establishments and ensuring the general safety, welfare, and quality of life of the town's neighborhoods and the broader community. A copy of the proposed changes is on file and may be viewed in the office of the town clerk by appointment Monday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., 8 Park Street, Adams, Mass. Okay, if, if we have any members of the public, when you are asked to speak, would you please state name and phone number? So I'd like to open this meeting. This is going to be a public hearing, correct? So I'm opening the public hearing. So you're up. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Donna Season. I'm the special projects coordinator uh, for the town. Um, I believe it was in 2018 where this board, when this board uh, first um, entertained uh, marijuana uh, bylaw provisions for the town. Um, as you remember, we had um, at least two or three um, meetings on the subject matter. Um, we uh, recommended, recommended approval of the bylaws, and then those were subsequently passed by town meeting. So we've had about two, two and a half years of experience. Uh, with the current bylaws. Um, at the time the board first adopted uh, the bylaws, um, I think there was a, a sense that, you know, this was a good first effort, but we would want to monitor the bylaw over time and see if it um, really addressed um, the town's needs. Um, since that time, um, town staff um, have had uh, several inquiries um, from marijuana businesses interested in locating in Adams. Many of these inquiries were uh, wanting to understand where there's either buildings, existing buildings, or available land. Um, a lot of times a business would come to us and say, oh, uh, we've identified this great property on Printworks Drive. We'd like to open uh, a marijuana business. And unfortunately, we, were, uh, we had to tell them in the IP zone, industrial park zone, um, marijuana businesses were not allowed except for a marijuana testing laboratory. So um, as these inquiries kept, um, uh, you know, they would again um, come to the town, uh, town administrator has had a number of businesses approach him. Um, we started to talk to the uh, board of selectmen about this and wondering if this was something that they were interested in the planning board um, considering. Um, in terms of taking up uh, an amendment to the existing bylaws to expand uh, the locations for marijuana businesses within Adams. Um, last, at your last meeting, we discussed this generally. Um, I think the feeling of this board was that you would be 
interested in expanding the locations, but you also wanted to be cautious by um, if those locations were expanded or certain businesses were expanded to the uh, industrial park, you wanted to have adequate scrutiny, adequate review. And so I think there was a discussion of um, being allowed, but by special permit, not by right. And so following the board's direction, what the um, proposed amendment in front of you tonight is that um, the paragraph C under section 125-35 uh, licensed marijuana establishments. Paragraph C is um, the designated locations for marijuana establishments. And we have added the sentence marijuana cultivators and product manufacturers as defined by this bylaw may be cited in the industrial park IP district if granted a special permit and subject to planning board approval. And then the, the paragraph um, continues um, under the bylaw, the special permit granting authority is of course the planning board. So um, this one sentence is really the only amendment to the bylaw. And then on the following page, um, just to uh, clarify, we've added a uh, change to the, um, the use regulation schedule. Um, it would be footnote nine, where again, we've expanded the um, marijuana cultivators, marijuana product manufacturers allowed by special permit. I'm happy to answer any questions, um, but that was a brief summary. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Mm -hmm. That's I do with one question. Can you just go over the special permit requirements, what they, what they would be, what the special permit requirements would be? Well, um, it's, so it, it's, um, it, 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 the um, uh, uh, applicant would come to you. Um, you can evaluate, you can impose conditions on that use. Really, it's, you're looking at the use. Um, with, it's different from site plan. Site plan, the use is allowed by right. Um, or, or it already has a special permit, and so you're you're imposing conditions that might address the appearance or the time. Um, you can um, take it; it's it's a more um, overall uh, approach. Um, you can impose conditions in terms of time of uh, the hours of operation. Um, so it's an added, uh, uh, you know, it's an added. Uh, level of review. Um, you can also just deny the special permit where site plan approval is just that. You can condition it, but unless there's something very egregious, it is, you know, the site plan gets approved. So if you were to determine that um, if a marijuana business is proposed and they could not mitigate any um, uh, impacts on neighboring properties or the surrounding uh, residential properties, and you could outright deny that, that special permit request and the use would not go forward. But the, there's not a set of criteria. No, there is not. It would just be, it would revert to the basic special permit criteria in the bylaw, which, you know, addresses um, traffic impacts, noise impacts, uh, environmental impacts. So, mm -hmm. Would residents have um, a voice in this? Um, like any public process, yes, indeed, they would. Um, it would be the board's choice if you wanted to combine the special permit process and the site plan uh, process, you could do that, if, if, but that would be up to the, the planning board itself. Mm -hmm. And how many areas are zoned industrial? In Adams, it's only the Adams Corporate Park. Property. That's the only, now you, I'm sorry, if you said industrial, industrial park is, industrial that's park. the okay. only location for industrial park. Oh, um, okay. Industrial, there's quite extensive areas along the Route 8 corridor. There's actually some industrial zoning in our downtown area. Okay, um, so but this is only for the park. Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay, anybody else? Hmm? Gary? No, thank you, sir. Today I'd like to open this up to the public. Again, if you uh, have comments, please state your name, phone number. Yep, go ahead. Good evening, Attorney De Dennis Egan. 
Phone number uh, with the law firm of Cohen, Kinney, Valicente, and Cook, located in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Phone number 413-553-0411. I represent uh, the property owner at 8 Renfrew Street, SNP Holdings, LLC, as well as uh, the operator <clears throat> at the property, Conserved Through Control, Inc. I want to make clear at the outset uh, that the owner and operator are not opposed to cannabis uses in the town of Adams. Uh, they're simply opposed to cannabis uses where inappropriate, uh, more specifically uh, in the industrial park. Um, furthermore, quite simply put, the town of Adams got it right the first time around when it excluded this proposed use in the industrial park zone. As the previous speaker just stated, there's extensive industrial district land in the town of Adams. This use is appropriate for the industrial zoning district because the industrial zoning district is, is, is intended for more intensive uses, including uses that create odor, noise, vibration, and dust. Industrial parks are not intended for those types of uses. If you look at the Town of Adams use regulation schedule, you will see that the types of uses that are allowed in industrial park are uh, light manufacturing and other lighter uses, excluding, uh, excluding this, this use. Uh, in this case, this proposed amendment by definition doesn't even meet the Town of Adams zoning bylaw site plan approval criteria. If I may quote from section 125-19C1, uh, the intent is protection of adjoining premises and the general neighborhood from the creation of nuisance by virtue of noise, odor, unsightliness, signs, or vibration. In this case, we need to Admit, we need to address the elephant in the room. This amendment is intended for one specific location, and that is 6 Renfrew Street. Uh, the applicant came before the Zoning Board of Appeals, and one of, uh, the, um, uh, one of the things stated by the applicant was that uh, smell, odor could be mi mitigated 100%. That, that's, not, that's not the case. Uh, the Betoniacs, who own Conserve Through Control, Inc., are in HVAC. They've worked in and around these facilities, and they will tell you that the odor is noxious and it's constant. One need look no further than Pittsfield and talk to the neighbors and look at online messaging boards. This odor is noxious. It's constant, uh, and, and it's ever-present. Pre Furthermore, this location is located fewer than 200 feet across the rotary from Renfrew Park. Um, children playing, families, uh, it, it's just totally inappropriate for that location. Uh, derogating from this community resource uh, with odor, traffic, and other uh, other uh, things that just make it incompatible. Um, the previous speaker had said there was, the town has had experience for the last two or three years. That may be so, but the town's got no experience with respect to cultivators and the odor and other noxious disturbances that they create. Um, and is my client's proposal and position that this town should have experience with cultivators before it makes such a wide sweeping amendment to its zoning bylaws and allows for this type of use in such an incongruous location um, based on essentially one property owner um, having a proposed buyer for the property. Um, thank you uh, for your time and uh, happy to answer any questions. Yeah, uh, you were talking about uh, the odor and that. Do you have any examples or or uh, 
other towns that have experienced the problem with the odors? Of if you Google, you can send, send first, first of all, it's, it's the applicant or proponent's burden to prove that it wouldn't occur uh, just from a legal and technical standpoint. However, one need go no further than a Google, a Google search and you will find entry after entry uh, of, of this issue. So to suggest that it's not out there is to turn a blind eye to an obvious issue. Again, plutoniacs are not adverse to this use in appropriate locations in Adam, including the industrial zone. And like I said, the town of Adams got it right the first time. We're simply saying that this industrial park is an inappropriate location given its proximity to Renfrew Park and its proximity to its neighbors. Do you have a question, Tom? Sure. Uh, this is attorney Joe Colonna, and I represent John Burke, um, who is now one of the named parties in the opposition to the uh, application that was made and the, and the uh, variance that was granted. And I just want to bring to the board's attention that were the panel's attention. You know, I think that I hear two primary objections from attorney Egan in his uh, strong efforts to represent his client. I hear them with regard to odor and I hear them with regard to traffic. And it sounds to me as if those are exactly the kind of conditions that the town would be looking into quite seriously when there's uh, when there's consideration for granting a special permit. And I would think that that is the appropriate time to uh, really try and put down to brass tacks how those issues are gonna be dealt with. Uh, those are the two major objections I hear, odor and traffic. But to look at a bigger picture with regard to the history in there, I think there's also, it's, it's strange because I think there's been a long history of other industrial processes within that park specifically like a pellet company that have produced far greater uh, uh, noxious issues than anything that I think that would be considered um, in Mr. Uh, in, in the eight Renfrew project. And it's also, you know, when you're talking about an industrial area, uh, my gosh, we've got specialty mineral, minerals right across the street. Uh, another major contributor to our uh, a town's uh, employment and and a lot of other good things, but yet you know they have a lot of cons they have a lot of environmental and um, air quality issues, which are which are dealt with effectively by the town. Um, I think this is in, in in contrast to to some of the other industrial uh, activities, both historically in the area and and currently surrounding it. It seems to me that this would be something that we would deal with um, in a special permit. A review. But let me, so aside from addressing the two major issues I hear from Attorney Egan, which are odor and traffic, I would just ask the, the, uh, the panel, what, what, would be the, what would be the next steps that the town will be considering in terms of time frame for moving this project forward? Um, well, the next step, if the um, planning board recommends approval, of the bylaw, it goes to town meeting. Um, town meeting is uh, June 20th, June 21st. 21st. So I would, um, just for clarification, um, I, I um, understand uh, Attorney Egan's um, concern, um, but this is really not about 6 Renfrew Street. I can speak honestly to the planning board, and I wouldn't want you to think that. Um, what tipped this and why I went to the town administrator and then we decided to go to the um, Board of Selectmen about this is because um, we had a business that was very excited about investing in the town of Adams in the MRA Labs building. As you know, it's vacant and they were all ready to go. Um, they were very excited. They were setting up meetings or they wanted to set up meetings and I had the unfortunate um, task of telling them, I'm sorry, um, this is not allowed. And they were crestfallen. I mean, they they had you know moved uh, initially forward because they were so excited about this. So uh, at that point, I went to the town administrator and I said, "Hey, you know, we um, this business. Do you think we should talk to the planning board and the board of selectmen about this? That there's just you know we have two empty buildings in the park. 
Uh, we have an empty lot and it just seems like this park was um, uh, developed for the purpose of manufacturing research and development. So it just seemed appropriate to discuss it with the planning board and selectmen at that juncture. So that's what happened. This has been already discussed with the selectmen? Yes, the selectmen, uh, quite often, as you know, um, the uh, either the planning board itself or the board of selectmen can initiate a zoning bylaw amendment. Okay. So because, um, you know, the town administrator typically routinely tells the board when there's business inquiries in the town and stuff, so we brought it to the selectmen and asked them if we you know, if they wanted to discuss it, I believe they discussed it first at a workshop meeting and then at a public meeting of the board. And at that time, they made a formal request to the planning board to consider this matter um, as a bylaw change. Okay. So the last meeting that we have before this meeting here, <clears throat> I asked if you could check to see if there were any other towns or cities that have the cultivators in those residential areas. My biggest concern is if you think back when the Peltice uh, factory was there, um, there was there, there was chaos as far as res uh, residents and, and neighbors because they got dust, they got odors, and it seems like the east side of town seems to get all the trash sometimes as far as odors, smells, dust, and you know I, I'm more concerned. Of, in that area of, of whether there's going to be odors um, from this type of cultivation thing. And that's, I mean, I'm concerned about that. Well, as, as you recall, um, this board approved the site plan for LC Square recently. And that question came up, and it, I believe you um, certainly um, scrutinized um, Mr. Babion um, and asked him several questions regarding the odor, and he told you about a closed system. Mm -hmm. A lot of this is the way the the approach of the company and how much care they take to addressing odor issues. But once the company is in there, it's it's like trying to get a shoehorn mm -hmm. again. No, that's precisely what you as a board would do. Just like you evaluate lighting impacts, you evaluate but traffic when, impacts. It, let's say we let's say we approve. It, mm -hmm. Okay. And they say they're going to do wonders, and and the sky's going to be pink. And two two months down the line, or three months down the line, that they're in operation, the residents in the neighborhood go crazy because they're the odors. They can't stand the odors. You're not going to be able to get them out of there. Now. Yeah. But, yeah. How are you going to stop them from business? You can go in there, and, and Jerry can go in there and say, "Well, you need better filter system." So they put another filter system in. They obeyed the law. But they're still creating a problem. And, yeah. and my concern is the res residents in that area. Actually, the Cannabis Commission has uh, uh, these outfits called sniffers. And what they do is they go out and they evaluate the, the odor from the operation. And they make a determination on, based on that odor if they need to increase any kind of filtration or any kind of... Uh, um, can they prevent can it from operating? No, but they will improve what's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I've seen too much where we're going to do this and we're going to do that and it doesn't happen. I think the difficulty is, is that if you want any kind of industrial operation in this town, you're going to have to make considerations for that. Um, you have um, the Lime Street, um, you know, specialty minerals. They're constantly blasting up there. That stuff comes down on us all the time. There's people that complain that the, the dust goes in their windows. They've been there for years. You had Lane Corporation down there. They were mixing chemicals. DEP was checking into them because they're making chemicals that the smell would infiltrate the neighborhoods. You had your pellet companies. You had industrial production, dust, these sort of things. If you want any kind of industrialization in, in this town, you have to make considerations. It's like every other community. Uh, um, that is true. However, we have industrial zones, which are different than IP zones to Mr. Egan's point. And he, he read to us what is generally the idea of an industrial park business model versus industrial. And when we, I don't know if I was on the board back then when this came as an industrial park, but clearly we had, the town had something in mind then 
Um, and it is, it is a, a different kind of a business model that's in that industrial park location. And to Dave's point, when, when the pellet guys were in there, so how long were they there? Five years, 10 years? I'm not sure. However long it took for them to run out their tax credits with the town, then they booked. Okay? So um, I, I don't think that was a win-win situation for us in that situation. And a big part of that was odor. Was odor, was dust, and that probably was not the right kind of business to go in there. But for whatever reason, it was there. So we have to be really careful about what goes in there. And <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Once someone's in there and you get the smell in there, what, what can you do about it? Um, it's, <laughs> it's a tough situation, I think. Uh, I've talked to the Cannabis Commission and they've told me that if they have any, if we have any problems with any operation that goes in any community, because I work with multiple communities, they say contact them and they will address <laughs> the situation. This is an industry. No, this is an industry. People are going to be hired. There's going to be people working. And it's, you know, I mean, the, the last uh, applicant that came in here, He's going to be having 30 workers working in that industry that he's going to have. Yeah, but it's not in a residential area. That's right. He's in an industrial zone. He's in an industrial area. There's other factories. This isn't an industrial. No, it's there's an industrial you across the river, you got residents. You got residents in that area. I know what you're saying. What I'm saying is, is they got filterization. They can filter out a lot of that smell. And what if they can't? How do you to the public? Anybody else in the public who wants to speak? I, I just, I, uh, uh, Joe Colonna again, and I don't know if I gave you my telephone number first off. It was 413-896-3350. I think the only thing that I, um, Consider when I'm when I'm hearing the, the debate that's going on. I think it's a serious debate that if you're interested in what's going on for the future of the town, then you you got to have a vigorous debate. But the one thing that I keep falling back to when I hear about this process is it's a permit, right? And if it's a permit, that means that there's another gate that anyone who wants to operate a business in the town of Adams has to go through. And it's the town managers and the town in the town boards that are at the gate. So I don't think that this discussion tonight says that if we put it forward to a town meeting, that it's an automatic um, automatic allowance of any business to go in there, come hell or high water. And I think you know there, there's always going to be any in any business development in in my experience there's always going to be a nimby aspect to it right not in my backyard it, it, it's good for any other place in the town but not here <clears throat> right that's a common thing but i guess i just want to go back to the point that i hear that i think makes a lot of sense is that any applicant who comes through that wants to operate a business in the town, in this area, has to get a permit. Through, through the board chair, may I respond to that? Sure. Uh, this isn't NIM, NIMBY. This isn't my client saying it's good anywhere in the town, but where this is being proposed. This is the town of Adams who has said this is good in the industrial zone. Uh, and I haven't heard any compelling argument that there's industrial zone is, is filled and there's no place in the industrial zone where this type of, of, of use is allowed. I've also heard pellets and other things. It just violates certainly my, my mother's rule that two, two wrongs don't make a right. And so I don't, I don't think that's a compelling argument that because there have been other 
uses that have been nox noxious and offensive, but those have been allowed that somehow now this use should be allowed. I just think that um, runs contrary to, to common sense. So thank, yeah. thank you. Dennis, I think the only, the only issue that I have with that and I bring it forward is, that, is what was mentioned when we uh, brought the variants forward. And that is from basically 1870s forward. That has been an industrial area. So it's not exactly as if we're pointing to two companies that didn't have favorable results in the last 20 years there. I mean, that area has had some form of light manufacturing or industrial work going back into the, the 1800s. Okay, Joe, I, I get that, but when current prop property owners bought their property, it wasn't the 1800s, they bought industrial park property they did their due diligence, which my clients certainly did. They looked at the use tables and they took a look at what types of uses were allowed in an industrial park. And now the proponents are suggesting that we should pull that rug out from under them and subject them to uses that was nev were never contemplated when the industrial park was built, uh, when the industrial park zoning district was established, and certainly when the uh, marijuana can cannabis uh, provisions were included in the town of Adams zoning bylaw. All right, let's move on to anybody else that, besides the two gentlemen that want to speak. I may, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. A uh, couple of things. First of all, I just wanted to reaffirm from uh, Ms. Season's point of view that, that her statement is correct. We've received uh, quite a few inquiries about available uses on buildings within the industrial park. Uh, those have been marijuana cultivators and or manufacturing. So there is uh, clearly an economic demand for that type of operation in that type of environment. So I just wanted to include that from an economic development standpoint. Secondly, from a control standpoint, Attorney Colonna is correct. That is why before you this evening as Community Development Director Season, and I'll always call her that even though she's essentially acting, uh, mm -hmm. states that the board has complete control over this with site plan approval and special permit. So this is going to be, a, if this goes through, if this is approved by town meeting, this would be a case by case basis where each proponent, uh, development proponent would have to come before the planning board and seek not only a special permit with conditions, but also seek site plan approval. I also believe, and Mr. Garner, you can speak up if I should misspeak, but it's my understanding that if the planning board correctly conditions a special permit, and they violate that special permit or are not acting in accordance with it, that special permit could be revoked and subject the business uh, to fines for illegal operation. Is that a correct statement? Correct. So the planning board and town governance in general does have some controls over this. Um, I thank the board for their deliberation as both attorney Egan and Kelowna have stated. You know, this is a, a brave new world that we in we've that we're in. We've come a long way from the days of Arnold Printworks uh, on that site. I would certainly think that everything that we're talking about tonight in terms of use was not <laughs> contemplated when uh, Chapter 40 and the other general uh, land use uh, chapters uh, passed at the state legislature. Uh, and so we're trying to adopt accordingly and we're trying to, to move ahead. So I thank the board for their time and their deliberation, as well as Attorney Egan and Kelowna for their, their input tonight. And Jerry and Donna, thank you uh, as well. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. No, I don't know, public. Okay. Do we have anybody else online besides what we have? Uh, yes, there are other participants. Are they accessible? Does anybody else need to speak? All right, hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Can, can I ask a question no. for a while? Okay, you can still ask after we close the public hearing. Yeah, but will they be able to answer? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to close the public hearing. Now it's just us. Now you can ask a question to them if you want to. Okay. Um, so, uh, Mr. Colonia, uh, you asked about time frame. What, uh, may I ask why is that a concern? Well, ma'am, I, I was really um, only asking it to have some sort of an idea of exactly that. It's um, 
to try and figure out when the town will take their next steps, when it could possibly be implemented, that sort of thing. Because I don't know if I can ask this, but is this could or could not affect your client by what happens here with our decision, should it move forward and then move forward onto town meeting? Well, in the sense that um, my client, John Burke, is the owner of Six Renfrew. So my client owns property in the IP zone. So he is directly affected by whatever decision is made, whether or not it moves forward to allow for a special permit. Okay, but I thought you went for a variance in front of the zoning board. We did, and we were granted okay. the variance. Okay. And that's being appealed by Attorney Egan's firm. Okay, so if I might, mm -hmm. um, I, I read the minutes from that zoning board uh, meeting yep. in which in which you argued that this that six run through was industrial back to 1800. Yes, okay. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So if this moves forward and gets approval and town meeting approval, then you would change your argument and say he's IP. So now we can come forward with the plan. I'm going to interrupt putting on my, my legal hat. Ms. Madursky, please keep in mind that the town of Adams is a defendant in this case, which is a normal process. Attorney Egan and his client had a right to appeal that decision because the town of Adams and his planning board uh, or zoning board rather is a defendant. I think it's probably best if we, we not go down to that specific uh, route uh, just to protect uh, the town of Adams legal interests. Uh, okay. That's okay. A, I will that make valid question. Point. I it's, will a, make it's a valid question. I just think it's it's best if we stay away from that particular legal issue. Well, it, it's pretty clear with both attorneys here participating tonight that there is an interest on both of their clients. And I think I'm, I can read through uh, uh, what's, what's happening here. Um, so I guess I'll make my own conclusions then if people can't comment. So be that that is me. Yeah. Now, can you keep the fine? I mean the difference between licensed marijuana establishment. What what does that mean compared to all these others? That's a it's an umbrella term. That's what the bylaw addresses: licensed marijuana establishments, of which cultivation, retail, testing, and production are all part under that umbrella of licensed marijuana establishments. Um, as you may recall. Um, certain marijuana establishments are permitted by right. Um, any, 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 um, I'm sorry, any marijuana establishment is permitted by right in the industrial zone. Retail may be allowed in B2 under certain circumstances by special permit. Um, industrial, um, the, the um, uh, testing labs are available as well. By special permit. So, so, so why does the chart say special permit for West Marijuana establishment and it's testing lab, but all the others say no? Because that's exactly the way it is. It, right now in the industrial park, you cannot do a, man, a marijuana business that focuses on manufacturing. Um, I would ask you to consider what difference is a manu, you know, manufacturer of of industrial gummies from manufacturing of other things that are currently in the industrial park. So, but that's not allowed in the IP zone. Um, retail is not allowed in the IP zone. I think there's an argument why that would be. So um, the, um, the cultivation currently, it's not allowed in the IP zone. So is, um, am I not answering your question or? Um. I'm a little confused as so um, I just, if you're saying mar marijuana establishment is a special permit, why aren't the others all special permit? First of all, this is a, a chart that was used um, to explain the bylaw. bylaw. So that's the older chart. This that's is the older what chart. Looking for now. So what it says is like licensed marijuana establishments are um, allowed in the um, B2 by special yeah. permit and yeah, the yeah. industrial park by special permit. But you have to take that down. So number two, it says marijuana independent testing laboratory allowed in IP subject to a special permit. Right now, that's the only marijuana business that's allowed in the IP zone. Okay. 
by a special permit. Understand? Yep. Okay. So, I mean, again, with this, this is only a step. So it, it's this five-member board that makes a decision on whether it goes forward from here. It still has to go to town meeting. Town meeting still has to approve it. That doesn't mean they are. That doesn't mean they're not. So it's still another step, and it gives more people involved with it to make a decision other than this five people. I think it's a good idea only because it's not a special permit and it gives some control over whatever is coming into the park. And we have a right to say no. But again, it's still got to go to town meeting. And sometimes it passes, sometimes it doesn't. Good point, David, that it goes to town meeting if this should move forward. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, all those applicants come back to the planning board under the site plan review slash special permit, or however we wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. And it comes back to ultimately five people to make that decision whether that special permit is granted or not. Correct. Whether it's this five member board or other people. Correct. But, but at the, in that point in time, we have control with the special permit criteria and the site plan approval criteria to govern any issues that may be coming up. And, and we can deny it because they're not meeting. If they're guaranteeing that they're going to have 100% uh, smell coordination and noise coordination, then you can hold them to it. If they fail to do it, you pull their special permit. Right. Because we can put that stipulation in, right? Right. They, they have to meet those requirements. If, if, if we're granting your special permit, we can say, you can't give us enough evidence to prove that you're doing this, then we're not going to give it to you. Yeah, because we can put that stipulation in and get those snippets, like you said. And we can give them 30 days, 90 days. We can work 90 days after production. If you've got a problem with odors and noise, you're going to have to come back to the board and solve it or go out of business or, right. or be fine. All right, question. Donna, do you know um, how, when is the time frame for the people that are going in down? Well, C squared? Yeah. Yes. Um, actually, they are now, um, they have their building permit or they, not quite, but they, they have, you know, they will be applying for their building permit. Um, the last time I talked to Mr. Babion, he wanted to open late summer. So to you, to maybe what you're thinking is this board, all of us will have some direct experience uh, with that. Right. And um, I remember, you know, at, at that, at his public um, hearing on the site plan, um, I would uh, remind you how he talked about only 10% of the air that um, in his um, business, in his building was actually going to be outside. It was a closed system. So, um, you know, we'll have some experience looking at that particular approach um, and, and how indeed how well it works. And then if we don't think that, you know, at that point in time, if we don't think the 10% is sufficient enough, we can depend on right? I, I will, I, I do have to say something also, um, just to, um, you know, staff's motivation. Um, we do have a lot of land that's zoned industrial. That's true. Most of that land is not um, served by public water or sewer. A lot of that land is really what you call agricultural land, um, but we've always had our industrial zone is kind of a um, holding zone for um, property until um, you know utilities were extended. So when we really look at what available properties that we have for businesses, any any. Um, business, um, manufacturing, light industrial, we do not have a lot of land or a lot of buildings available to do that. And, and you know, fault me if you want, but I have been trying very hard to grow this town. Um, I hear all the time from individuals how high their taxes are. We're not going to solve that until we start growing the town, um, generating more tax revenue. Um, and now as a taxpayer myself, it becomes, um, really comes home to me, so. I mean, I wonder if we talk with, with, with other communities, you know, and, 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 and maybe uh, got some, uh, you know, some, some, something from that, you know. Uh, he said, go online. 
to be saved. But people are always going to be complainers. You're always going to have your complainers. Can't please everybody, you know. But uh, I, you know, I, because there's a lot of money for the town to be made here. That's not the only consideration. We no, have, I know that. It has I to be cited in the right, I understand right places. It. But we could put stipulations, you know, about the smell, and that's the basic uh, smell and noise. What's that? Smell and noise. Yeah, smell, smell and noise, and maybe the traffic if you have a store. Because no, uh, that store is not under consideration here. Sure. Retail is not under consideration here. Well, it can be. be no, it's not. Not under no. Oh, Okay, all right. Well, so anyways, the traffic's not going to be a problem. Huh. No, really. You live on the east side of town? Mm -hmm. We got. Do you live on the east side of town? Yes, I do. Where? Up on Adams Avenue. Do you live East Road area? I just down below it. See the trailer trucks and the traffic going by East Road and Lime Street. They fly by there. Yeah, I don't know why they're going that way all the time. Because yeah. it's easier for them to. Than to go around the roundabout. Well, now not only that, they're, they're avoiding the construction on Route 8. Yeah, but that, this is before the Route 8 stuff. <laughs> anyway, that, that's neither here nor there. So, so I mean, there is a traffic consideration. You do have to consider traffic. Right. But but the I'm saying the traffic for this uh, type of business, I mean, it's not going to be, it is, it is an industry. It really is. You know, and there's going to be jobs too. They really, you know, who knows how many, but um, there's going to be jobs and it's going to be taxes coming into the town. And just like uh, Donna was saying, people are always complaining about how high the taxes are. Does anybody have anything specific question? Concerned? No. All I want to say is that this is just a special permit. Yeah. It needs to be approved by the town meeting and it gives us control over how it's developed, anything right. that's developed. And by that time, technology is always changing and you don't know air quality, what they're gonna do with that because this is a growing industry and technology is always changing. Yeah, no. They're always improving, you know, overnight. So by the time anything comes in, we and we have control over it. I, I just, <laughs> you know, the last permit, I don't, Everything they presented to us, we went along with. Hopefully it'll work. I, I, I don't know. Maybe, you know, control. Okay, well, it's all new to us. So we don't know if the filtration system is going to work. Maybe we should put this on hold and wait and see what happens when, when the new company comes in. They're going to be online. Let's see what happens there with, with the older. You know, you if you... If we okay this now, how many empty spaces are there in the IP? Could you possibly have three growers there and three people with potential odor problems? That could be overwhelming for the neighborhood. Is there anybody online right now that is interested? No. Is there outlooks of anything in the future, near future? No, we certainly have not um, indicated to people, hey, we're making this pilot change. No, we have no good, prospects. Uh, so, I mean, we don't know if somebody's, if nine kids out of ten, somebody's not going to win tomorrow or the end of next week. Um, so, I'm sure that there's time, but yeah, again, it is a special permit process. Can, can we, like, what uh, she was saying was, or Sandy was saying was, like, say three growers want to come in. Can we limit how many growers are in that park? We can deny it for a specific reason. Whatever. <laughs> give me, give me, a, give me an example. What a specific reason would be? I mean, how many lots are open? Three. There are There's two buildings. I understand two buildings and one lot. Yes. But is there anything in the state law that says that we have to set? We can't say that you can only have one grower there. Well, again, I would suggest that you as a board would look at impacts. It is, um, as Mr. Green said, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. So um, the second one in, should we be that lucky? Um, you know, and they are, you're thinking, oh, well, there's some um, impacts here that we are a little uncomfortable that whether or not you'd be able to mitigate. Yes, you could deny them outright. 
I mean, that is the whole point of a special permit. Right, and maybe after the first one in, we'll have more, you know, data. You know, and after we get one in there, even after the one that comes up down here, once that's in, we, we can go around down there and see what it's like. Well, maybe we should wait, and so that's going to come online this summer. There's always a, there's always a um, a special town meeting in the fall. You know, maybe we could postpone and wait till then, gather some more information. Jerry, what kind of enforcements can you put on? I mean, if if something came up. Well, if you, I mean, if you do a special permit and they're in violation of the special permit, I can make them come before the board again. But I would do other resources. I would do other things before I brought them before the board again. I would only bring them before the board if, if there was egregious and they were just not listening to me and not taking any kind of steps to, to remedy whatever condition it is. And that doesn't just apply to marijuana. It applies to most everything in the town. Yeah. I mean, it just gives us another step. Have you heard anything about any kind of these businesses anywhere? The, how it's like? The marijuana? Yeah. I don't hear that much. Uh, you see, what it solves oh, is cool. that if you're, if you're Googling things, okay, I call it Google the negative atmosphere. It's like there's nothing but negativity out there. It's like Facebook. It's nothing but negativity. Right, right. If you're talking to the public, you're only going to hear from the naysayers, people who say yes or promote. They sit back. They never say anything. You need to talk to municipalities. We're going to talk to anything and see what they say. They're the ones that get the, the information. But of, of the growers that are out there, I haven't heard a lot about their establishments from any of my fellow building officials. When they first went in there, everybody was complaining just because the building was being put up. But after they, they were in there, I didn't hear anything. Do you, do you have? Any examples of what towns you're talking about or cities? I'm talking about um, Sheffield. I'm talking about Sheffield. That quickly went away after the first crop. Then after that, it kind of just pittered away. Uh, Pittsfield. Um, uh, what was the other one? Um, I can't remember. Anyways, they have cult there's cultivation facilities all over the place, but you rarely hear about them. Their mitigation for, uh, and, and it's, let's face it, it's older, everybody's worried about. Mm -hmm. Their mitigation systems are becoming more um, uh, robust in mitigating the smells and everything. We saw the ones that's in Berkshire Roots. Uh, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. And it's bigger than this room. And it's a big, huge mitigation system. And they're, they're tweaking it to get it to work correctly. But as Donna said, like their system, it's only like 10 to 7% that's going out into the atmosphere. It's not a lot. But you haven't heard any complaints or anything? Nothing today. from, no, no, I haven't heard anything. The other thing is, is that getting off topic just a hair about the traffic, you've got two industrial buildings down there and, a, and an empty lot, okay? It's an industrial park. What is an industrial park? You have truck traffic. Mm -hmm. You have car traffic. Anything you put down there is going to increase this traffic flow. I don't even think that's a consideration. You could have a manufacturer going in there that produces products every two hours, and have a truck there every three hours. So it gets, and goes in there three times a day. Are you going to tell them they can't go into an industrial park because they're doing an industrial business because of traffic? I mean, that's kind of a foolish thing. Plus, they made the traffic circle to make it easier for people to get in and out of there and not to impact traffic as much. So I think any building that goes, anything that gets, goes down there, I think traffic is, uh, is a low consideration here for that, for that particular space. That's just my opinion. Right. There's a, there's a lot of um, people that use that industrial park throughway, if you will, to go from Lime Street over to Route 8, as opposed to going down to the north and coming out by specialty minerals and then go yeah, back see. south. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's there. You, you, in addition to who's ever in and out with deliveries and, and that sort of thing. For I can tell you every shortcut in this town because I use them all the time. <laughs> and I can tell you that I'm one of many that use those shortcuts mm -hmm. and nobody complains about it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, like coming off 116 to go to Route 8 before all the traffic was 
generated down here by all the construction, everybody goes down Glen Street off of 116. Some of the truckers go down Leonard Street. So, you know, the people learn and people use these things. I mean, you know, this happens all over town and not just here in Pittsfield. I can get, I beat my wife home one day by almost 15 minutes because I know all the shortcuts. So, like I said, traffic is traffic. When was the last time this uh, board ever did a, a road trip? I mean, as a group? Yeah. To check out that place in Pittsfield. I don't think we've ever did a road trip no, out of town. <laughs> no, no, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, because if we went down there and could smell for ourselves. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm well, serious. Yeah. Uh, well, let, let's put it this way. If you look at, let's use that as an example, we'll just leave the name out of it. If you look at that building in particular, look at the building that's being put up in the front. Would they be building that building, a, a multi million dollar building? If the high rise, right. if that was such a. And, and the top floor of that building is nothing but filtration. Okay, so. So, I mean, you know, that, I mean, they just, they just four times the amount that they're producing. So it's so so I don't think it's a, that much of a problem then. I'm not I'm not saying you no, 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 I don't know. I appreciate production four times. I and mean, we do have to look out for the public. Correct. We do have to look out for and that's the purpose of these the special permit criteria. Right. And so and and we can always, you know, put that put that in a special permit. You know, you get special condition, special any condition, kind of condition. anything you want, right? To so, make it a condition. But rather than make it a, a car watch and say yes, right. And all we're doing is pushing it forward to town meeting. And town meeting's got to pass it. Right. And but then and even if it, it does get passed, it still has a means of being checked because right. it has to come back through some board in town right. in order to get checked to go forward. Exactly. And if you feel like one marijuana facility is enough down there, then one marijuana facility is enough down there. I mean. And I, we don't feel that I don't anything know. in regards to the air filtration, everybody don't understand it. We can we can ask them to, to bring in a professional. That's a good idea. So we can ask them to bring in a consultant at their expense to, to tell us ins and outs. I think that's a great idea. But we we can do that with a special permit. Right. I think. Uh, yeah, I think that's it's, great. It's somewhat akin to um, the uh, wireless. Um, provisions that the board adopted um, when you had the first, um, uh, what is it, wireless, uh, you know, tower, yep. um, and I think you had them do a, a balloon test where yes. you could actually see the visual impact. <laughs> you had to do, a, um, a, you know, the balloon test for the, the board before you would make your decision on that um, request. Yeah, I think that, okay, it's, my questions have been answered. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, I just, I'm not sure that we could limit the number of potential growers um, in the industrial park. I, I don't think you can. I, I can't see that happening. I'm, I'm not really saying you're limiting it. What I'm saying is if you're not for it, then you vote against it. Well, I, I, but you got to have a good reason. You can't just say, uh, we, we got enough people in there. We don't want you to go there. I, I don't think we could do that. No, it, 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 I mean, it, it's like if you've got uh, restaurants, three Chinese restaurants. Say, well, we can't have another one. If, if, we, if we have, say we approve out of the three lots, we approve one. You got to go through a special permit, go through a site plan, it's up and it's constructed. And there's issues with it in, in regard to noise and odor. Second one comes in. Because the first one has to take care of it, they're using the same systems. We can say no. Unless they can come up with a better plan mm -hmm. or prove to us that they're going to have a better circulation or a better ventilation system than the first one. Right. We don't have to get, we don't, we can say that, all right, first one hasn't made a goal of it. We're not going to give you one based on that. We don't, we don't really have to have a flat reason to, to, to deny a special permit, special permit, special permit. I don't know, I think it's going to be a little difficult. That's if it's something other than. Um, it just gives a little more flexibility to the zoning bylaws as, as far as 
being able to get something else in, but we still have control over it. We, we do have control over it, I, you know, but you can put stipulations in there, which we can, right? And I do think the filtration system is a big stipulation, right? And uh, just like he said, the chairman said, if uh, the first one that's in there and it doesn't work out, second one can't come in unless they can really show us that they have a better system and prove it to us. How are they going to prove it until it's actually in use? Well, they got it. They, they send in. We, we have them hire a specialist, like Jerry said, to come in. They have a third party come in if they pay for it. It's yeah. not affiliated with them. But just like Jerry said, with that place up in Pittsfield, would they be building that huge building up there if they're not having, having problems with the first one? Anyway, any other questions? Yeah, the drones are on. <laughs> this is, and, I, and I forgot to put the tape on. The tape? Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a motion. Okay. Go ahead. You don't know what it's going to be. No, that's all right. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to make a motion that we take no action on this tonight, that we get some more information from uh, other cultivators, uh, other towns uh, in the Berkshires and other places um, before we make a decision. And we can do this at a later date. Motion made, second. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? And I didn't make it. <laughs> gotta try. <laughs> gotta try. Always. All right. Any other motion? I make motion that we pass this. Um, let me see. If I can see this now. Uh, we pass this. Word, which one? What am I looking at here? <laughs> okay. Okay, I got it right here. This licensed marijuana establishment, um, 125, 35 uh, special regulation, special permits. Licensed marijuana establishment, paragraph C, as uh, proposed. Is that good? Sure. Just to clarify the motion, so you're recommending approval of approval. the proposed amendment to uh, section 125 yeah, as proposed. paragraph C, as proposed. As proposed. Second? I second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Opposed. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other business? For me? No. Not today. Do you have a um, meeting next week? We do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cumberland Farms, baby. No. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, I guess I didn't realize it was next week. So you'll have your memorial day. No, I'm getting free. busy. Are you know what that? Things are starting to pop again. <laughs> So that's messy. I might not be here. You will be severely missed. I I on vacation. I'm not not be. Where are you going? Yeah. Hawaii. <laughs> Somewhere away from here. <laughs> yeah. What about the Bahamas? I'm gonna take them. All right. Any other business? There are not any mail call. Motion to adjourn. I I make motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. <laughs> any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So move. Good. I gotta go home and watch those drones. <laughs> <laughs>